Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. In today's video, we're going to be exploring some variegation in plants. We're going to cover a lot of species. So I'm going to quickly do an introduction so you know where I'm going with this. And then the most of the video is going to be a tour just to show you what variegated and non-variegated plants look like uh, side by side. Of course, I don't own every plant in the world. So I'm just going to show you only what I have. And of course, I'm going to inject my personal opinion as to which I prefer. I don't always prefer the variegated version, by the way. And this is also for you to get in, stay informed and understand that there are different varieties of plants around and make your own opinion as to what you like better. But first of all, let me address what variegation is. Variegation in nature basically is a mutation in plants in which they form splotches and things like that on the leaves that we actually find beautiful or at least most of us do i know there are people that really don't like variegation but it's important to know that variegated plants actually are not going to be as robust as the regular green form i'm going to show you right here this is the philodendron ring of fire and philodendron jungle boogie and this is the variegated version of that so in nature when these plants grow side by side or if they grow side by side this one would win because plants are always going to be clamoring up for space they're going to fight for root space for leaf space to get more light and nutrients and this plant having full chlorophyll will have all the advantage so this plant will actually die off in well not die off it will not have the advantages as this one in nature but the thing with houseplant collecting is that we tend to be drawn to this type of variegation which is why we now have many many variegated plants because we just kept finding the variegated leaf or plant we just cut it and then we propagate it and we make more of it and we share it this is why we have so many variegated versions of plants in our collection just keep that in mind my point is that in nature they will not be very common and they will not be the strongest now there are chemical variegations and I'm not going to be addressing that much in this video at all. You're basically inducing the plant with chemicals to activate parts of their DNA or genome. And usually these are temporary as far as I know, but I can't be sure. I personally prefer natural variegated plants because they look pretty real, except the Monstera Thai constellation. That is actually a really well done variegated plant. And also the Philodendron Birkin right here. This is also well done. It's a, I believe a hybrid or a result of tissue culture that created this uh, mutated plant but it is quite beautiful so there are many types of variegation natural and unnatural and again I'm not going to discuss it in this video this video is going to be all about appreciating non-variegated plants alongside with variegated plants both are beautiful and stunning in their own right they both have slightly different care so I guess I'm just going to get started Let's start the tour with this philodendron jungle boogie that we saw indoors. I actually prefer the variegated version. This is the ring of fire. It's got really nice markings on the leaves and both of these can get insanely huge. These are actually babies. Although I did get this and it died off so I had to grow this back from a tiny tiny plant like the leaves are just this size and in six months it's given me this. So they both grow relatively fast. I would say that the green theoretically should grow a little bit faster as is, as are all the plants I'm going to show you in this video. The greens are going to be stronger and healthier and faster growing. But I do prefer this. Both of them have the same pink sheath as you can see here. They are very cute. I love watching them unfurl with their rubbery leaves. However, there's something wrong with this one leaf. It's given me all variegated leaf. This is the newest one, so it's gone back to normal. It's going to be a healthy plant, but this is going to set the plant back a lot because this leaf is actually no good for it. I'm going to take it off right now. Take it off. It's going to drain energy from this plant. Yeah, I, for this particular species, I adore the ring of fire. This is a this is one I like more. Uh, let me know uh, in, with all these other plants that I'm going to show you, let, let us know in the comments down below which one you prefer. Next we have this Boston fern and there's a variegated version of this and I can't bring it because it's so huge. And that's over there. Let me walk over because it's propagating with the other pots nearby. So this is the variegated version. Look at that. The leaves are so pretty. Markings. This one actually grows really slowly and actually they put out these roots and I just tuck these roots to the next pot over and as you can see this is the next pot over. Baby plants have grown from them. This is lighter green. 
I actually like the variegated one better than the other one because the regular green form is so basic but the green one grows so fast so 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 fast compared to this one the next plant is the classic peace lily or spatophyllum and I apologize for the construction noises in a from the neighbors but this is so beautiful this got really big I got this as a tiny plant it can handle low light very forgiving with watering definitely recommend this as a lifelong companion for people because this can get even bigger than this however we're going to discuss today the different variegated versions of these and they are much slower growing than this and this one is I, I don't know the names of these variegated ones but they have different leaf patterns, different variegation patterns and leaf shapes and sizes. I believe one could be called the Domino and one could be called the Picasso, but I can be sure. And this is the next one. It's got very crinkle type leaf surface. I do enjoy having this around. And this last one is the more classic variegated peace lily. It's just simply called the variegated peace lily. And actually the variegation on these are very very remarkable. I've got maybe 50 pots of these. They grow relatively fast, easy to care for. You do need to give them light to have their variegation uh, come through. So out of all of these, I think my favorite would be the green four. Because they're always growing, they're non-stop growing and I really love looking at this. I'm sorry about the hard water stain. I want you to imagine this without the water stain. But look at how beautiful the ridges are on the leaf. Very, very underrated. And this one can also live in low light. It can also live in a little bit of direct sunlight. So this is in terms of care. I don't have to worry about this as much. This here is a philodendron burlamarx. It's a very classic philodendron with those classic shaped leaves. Very fast growing. I got this as a tiny plant. In a year's time, it's given me this and I also have propagated quite a bit of this. And let me show you the variegated version. Here is the variegated specimen and I'm so sorry because a lot of these have reverted so I have to actually propagate this soon but look at how beautiful the markings are on these. They used to be very inexpensive and they used to be available everywhere and these days over the pandemic prices have soared and everyone wants one of this. So this actually looks a little bit like the Biliotai which we will get into later. The variegated Biliotai which costs so much more than this. But I would say for this plant I like the green form better because the green one actually grew really really fast for me. It's a classic house plant. It's very beautiful for landscaping. And for this, the reason why it's reverted is because I ended up putting it in low light. I don't know why I did that. Maybe because I didn't think that it was worth the VIP seed of getting good light. So I've since moved it into this light, which is actually, if you can see now, it's direct sunlight. It's getting about two to three hours of direct sunlight a day. And I think that variegation is going to be quite happening soon. So I don't really have a specimen of this, but this is the Epipremnum pinnatum. The only mature size leaf is that one, unfortunately. So I got this for free uh, some, when I was buying a pot. This came with it. And this is the green form. Obviously, we're going to visit the variegated one later. But yeah, this is still rehabbing. It's going to take over that wall soon. And as it climbs up, look at the roots. As it climbs up, it will start producing really big and penetrated leaves. Look at all this room that it has to grow. It can grow all the way up. So hopefully one day it will get there. This here, this is the variegated version of the Apipremnum pinnatum variegata. And as you let it climb up, it will give you more penetrated leaves, bigger leaves. This is from our propagation. This is our parent plant. And I'm so sorry about the construction noise is going at full speed today, but I have to film today so yeah we're stuck with that crazy construction noise apologies about that but i actually prefer the variegated of these i have a feeling that they will become more popular someday than the variegated monsteras only because their leaves can get huge it's dramatic long fenestrated and they grow a lot faster the variegations are so random look at these I think they're just not so popular on Instagram yet, which is why not many people are collecting these. But I have a prediction that the prices will soar for these in the future. This here is a philodendron billy tie. And I'm sorry, I don't really have a perfect specimen of this. 
but it's really well known for its orange patio which is not that orange right now because this is combating root rot and I have rehabbed it so I can now see very healthy roots in here so it's gonna rehab really well but these guys can get enormous they can get huge about 10 times this size of the leaf so I can't wait for this to rehab and do better but let me reach out for you the variegated version and this is actually it used to be very common but it's really hard to come by now and it's got the same orange patio and both of them have that orange rim around the edge of the leaves if you can see here and that is so adorable look at that it's like someone drew an outline on these and for this plant i really prefer the variegated version i got these as a really tiny baby plant it was so expensive i could not afford it but i I got it anyways, the leaves were the size of my pinky. That was how small the leaves were. And I was so nervous about it, but it grew back. The variegation seems to be quite stable. And I'm not really that worried about this guy. It was definitely worth, well worth my investment. And it's just such a beautiful plant. So yeah, for this plant, the variegated one is a winner. But this guy, the green ones are also beautiful. They can get enormous, they grow faster. And I've seen them attach themselves to trees very nice i would never leave these outdoors in public but these guys they can be a little bit more public public plants i guess because i don't know people do steal them don't get me wrong i have heard on instagram stories of people whose biliotypes were just chopped off from their trees but these are so classic and they just look good everywhere while these guys are just collect collector's items and you don't want to have them out in a, and about and also because of how they are priced unfortunately and these little guys this is the Dishkidia ruskifolia or the million hearts very very lovely underrated plants i have a video on these guys and i'm gonna link that up above or include that in the sh uh, description box below but this is very pretty these are all my propagates look at the baby leaves they are cute but they come variegated as well let me show you right here so the variegation is around the rim of the leaves of course the variegated versions of these grow a little bit slower but the shape is just the same and they're actually very feisty this plant they're very sharp edges so they can actually poke you and they're very, very again very slow growers they're really pretty for these guys i i think it's a tie can i do that can i do a tie i like them both i like the classic all green and also like the variegated versions of these and of course the variegated ones cost a little bit more but they grow so slowly compared to the green ones the green ones already grow slow in their own right don't get me wrong but the variegated ones oh my god they just really test my patience this is the wax iv i'm going to include the name obviously on the screen for the latin name because i can't remember it and i actually like the green one of these better and this is the clip of the variegated version these are actually propagating away so as you can see the ones that were all green I, you can actually look at the shape better like the shape is actually very pretty it looks like dragon head but in the variegated ones it's they come with this random variegation around the edges and I feel like they just take away from the succulence of the leaf, from the shape of the leaf that is just so unique in its own right. So yeah, for this plant, I do prefer the all green version, which I don't have yet. Hopefully someday I'll get it. This here is the Philodendron Florida Ghost. And it's named this way because of the leaf shape that looked like, like a ghost. And I believe this is a hybrid, but they green form the green form actually do have some random variegation sports once in a while i got a lot of dm of you guys asking me like oh my god am i getting a variegated plant because i got it at a green as a green plant yeah they do put out these variegated uh portions but then i find that they're very random and they don't really show up in the next leaf but look at how big this leaf is and it can actually get a lot bigger than this and ants love this plant look at all these dots on the new sheet in the growth point that is the extra floral nectaries, which is inviting the ants, which are protecting the plants from pests because the ants are feeding on the sugar from this philodendron here. And before I digress too much, let me show you the variegated version. This is the philodendron Florida Beauty. It comes in a yellow variegation, which is really pretty. This next leaf that I got, it's completely variegated and the next leaf is 
almost all variegated. So I actually need to pull this away from light and I see a lot of ants here, which is going to suggest that this is also putting out a lot of extra floral nectaries which I think this specimen really does enjoy putting out, but I don't mind it because the ants are actually protecting the plant from crazier and more serious pests, so I just leave it be. I may have to pull this away from the light just to encourage a little bit more green on the next leaf, but the most commonly asked question about this plant is that their variegation is super, super random, but it's very, quite stable in my opinion, so they don't really revert to all green, unless, of course, you put it in low light, then yeah, it will give you all green leaves, but for this plant, sometimes in within just one plant, you can have an all green leaf. In, in another plant, you can have an all, in another leaf, you can have all variegated leaf. But then the whole plant in, as a whole will have a mix. Do you know what I mean? A mix of maybe like halves, some splashes, because their variegation is stable, but they're very, very random. If you know what I mean. So don't worry if you had bought this plant, because this is actually quite expensive now. They used to be a lot more affordable. Uh, if they put out a, a new leaf that's all variegated or all green, don't freak out yet, <laughs> don't DM me yet. Wait a few more leaves because usually the next leaf is going to be just fine. So the jury for this is actually prefer the green form better. I'm so sorry, not that, nothing against you. But I have a really good relationship with the green one. They grow so fast, they grow so well in my care and I don't really worry about the variegation, the price is pretty good on these and I love looking at these huge leaves. They actually put on quite a show uh, when those sheets are unfurling. So they unfurl very often and whenever I'm checking on this plant something is unfurling. So the green plant is so prolific and I really love, there's another variegation there, I love the lines and I, I think that this is such a beautiful shape on its own that you don't need variegation on this plant. So I prefer the green form on this plant. All right, next is the Peperomia, our first Peperomia contender in this video. This is the Caparata, and I believe they come in many, many forms of these. But this is the classic one that's green. And next to me here, this is the variegated one, and it comes in a pink variegation. I can't really find the species name of these. This is flowering, actually, so cute. Um, but yeah, this is what the typical Peperomia flower look like, though. So they look like rat tails. And this is actually really pretty. The variegation is super random. They do need brighter light, as with all the variegated plants that you see in this video. They need brighter light to push out variegation and to survive. And for this plant, I actually prefer this one, the variegated one. Even though this is a classic look somehow, but this one, look at that. This is just so pretty. This is also a fast grower. It's very easy to kill these though. They don't like to be overwatered and I feel like they don't like to be, have a sudden change in environment or watering frequency. So if I were you and I bought this plant, the first thing that I would do is I would propagate it and let the new propagate. That's a mealybug there, sorry. Squishy mealybug. <laughs> Anyways, I would let the, the new plant be acclimatized to your environment so they will be much prolific grower in your uh, environment such as in this case where it grew so much this is about four to five months and I've actually already taken about six or seven cuttings from this plant so definitely love this one um, more than this one but this is still very very cute the next plant is the classic Syngonium podophyllum and that's actually the baby plant from this and let me explain actually for this plant they it's usually like green it comes with a little bit of this variegation however when you give them direct sunlight like this in this case i give it like almost full sun i would say it gets about three to four to five hours of direct sunlight a day and hot afternoon sun you do have to water it a little bit more if you give it the good sun but as you can see this is the cutting taken from this and when you give it good light and uh, it will give you mostly variegated leaves so this is why i actually really love this classic plant because you can control how much variegation you're gonna get. If you look at Instagram, everybody's plant looks different. This is actually nice in its own right. The green looks nice too. And when it's mature, when you let it climb up, it will give you some really huge split leaves. But that's another video for another day. I actually have a video on propagating leaves. So I'm gonna link that here in case the video is out. Okay, so when it comes to Syngonium podophyllum variegata, look at this new leaf that's opening up. This is the classic one, it's a white variegated one and it used to be a bit expensive but because they grow so fast and propagate so easily 
that now the prices has come down. So it, I have a feeling the price will continue to come down, but look at how beautiful the variegation is. Each leaf is just so nice. And to care for it, it's very simple. You don't want to let it get too underwater or it's going to give you crisping edges. Or if you overwater it, it's also going to give you crisping edges and some yellowing leaves that fall off. So these guys are actually quite easy to care for. And in my opinion, they're a little bit forgiving, but you just don't want to let it go too far to overwatered or underwatered. And what else is there? Yeah, sorry, I digress. Here is the final one. This is the yellow variegated Syngonium podophyllum. As you can see, the variegation is very different on these. And let's see, this is actually a little bit more expensive. This is very rare, more difficult to find. They start out with the green variegation like this and um, as it hardens, it becomes like a, a distinct yellow and green foliage like this. Which one do I prefer? I actually like this one. This is such a beautiful variegation and I love this white on green. Really, really pretty. And let me see if I can find more. And I have propagated so many of these and this is just so pretty. Yeah, this is a winner for me. But the yellow one is pretty as well. And the regular unvariegated version that we saw earlier, I have a lot of respect for that plant too because it is so resilient, it's tough to kill and it can give you a variety of variegation depending on the environment that you give it. So I do appreciate that. But this one I recommend for people who, who want to start out, who want to learn how to take care of variegated plants. This is going to be a very good gateway plant because it's got the same properties. Like you need to give it light for it to push out variegation. So it's going to be a very good light meter. If you can keep this alive, you can keep a variegated monstera alive. Speaking of variegated monstera, I guess you know where I'm going next. Uh, this is a very classic Monstera, so I don't need to give you any introduction on these. So let's look at the variegated one. All right, so these are the variegated Monsteras. You've seen these on Instagram. You're probably sick of it by now, as you should be, because I don't know, they're just overrated. They're just everywhere and people keep wanting to buy them. The plant prices have inflated. There's so much pain on of people buying them and having a bad experience with buying them or growing them out, having them revert, having burnt leaves and all that stuff because this is not an easy plant to care for. So it's only got a new leaf here, very cute. I actually prefer this one to than the regular ver uh, non-variegated version only because I check on these guys so much. Like they gave me a lot of stress. I have to move them around for the light levels to have uh, to kind of control their variegation. If you haven't seen my variegation video on these, I did have a video on this, so do check it out because you can control the variegation somewhat, although some of it is depending on the luck and also the genetics of the plant that you have. So it is a stressful plant that I really look into often, I check on them often and I have many of these because I keep propagating them. They're going to be for sale at some point and I'm going to have to fund my nursery or my dream of having a botanical garden in the future and maybe this is what's going to give to start that fun funding for, for that project. But I appreciate these. I do love the beauty on the variegation. But again, it's a bit stressful so just to let you know it's not for beginners and it's worth the it's worth the the price ought to be honest but it's also worth waiting for the prices to come down because these propagate quite easily and the prices will come down i promise you especially after covid so if you don't have one of these yet and you're waiting on these get the green form first practice propagating it and caring for it get the syngonium podophyllum variegata just to practice your plant care re regime and when the prices come down, you can go ahead and get one of these. They make really good lifelong companions, but the prices will come down. So don't regret buying it now at a crazy price. Oh, and with regards to the variegated Monstera, I need to add that there's the Thai Constellation version here, which is creamier splash, and then the white Albo Variegata ones. And I actually don't love this plant. I don't know why. The, the variegation is actually quite pretty splash you on its own right. It actually costs a little bit more than the white variegated ones. The leaf is thicker, the patios are thicker. This is a stronger plant and the internodes are closer, but I failed I, with propagation in, in, for this plant. I killed so many of these. This is a very difficult plant to propagate because of their close internodes because they are such slow growers. They grow three times slower than your variegated, I mean your white variegated Monstera. 
which is why they have such a high chance of rotting when you're propagating it which is why i don't know i just don't love this plant i want to have it as a lifelong companion i want it in my collection but this is the plant that i don't know i just don't love yet so maybe someday i'll change my mind about this the next plant is the monstera edensonii this is actually one of my favorite plants and i know i say that about all my plants but they grow so well in my environment i do so well with them i have propagated maybe 50 pots of these within a year from just one tiny plant so this is a very very nice plant with beautiful shaped leaves i enjoy them i enjoy caring for it i enjoy appreciating it this is a plant that's so close to my heart and i'm really glad that they come variegated so this is the local variegated and i'm sorry i have had big plants of these but then i cut them up including that one i cut them up to propagate it so these are all smaller versions smaller cuts of the plant but this is the very creamy variegation this next leaf is just unfurling this one's looking funky because i cut it here so the the, the plant is very very stressed out it's putting out juvenile leaves so the leaf shape is probably a bit deformed but trust me the the full plant looks beautiful and also the plants that are propagated from these the variegation are, are so beautiful and the leaf shapes are so beautiful but this is a bit struggling i would say very pretty cream variegation so i have a video on the edensonia i just so you know and the video should be out by now so i can only link five videos up above in, in the description so if i if you don't see the the video for this up here check out the description below for a link to that video because it is a cool video about the edensonia i care and also the propagation i propagate the variegated one of these so you can see all the baby plants that came from this plant and this last one is like, oh my god, very stressing. This is the most expensive plant that I got. This is the variegated that's what we call from Japan. I don't know why they call it that, but it's um, not splashy. The variegation is solid colored. I did propagate this and a new shoot is coming out, but I think the new shoot is going to be all green. I have a feeling. So let's see on this, but when I make a cut here, a lot of the cuttings are doing well. I don't know what the buds, the new growth on the cuttings will look like, but this should put out a few more branches from below over time. So I have a lot of chances of having variegated leaves. But for this reason, this plant is very, very stressful, but, and it's also a bit expensive as you can see. So I, I don't know, it stresses me out, man. When we talk about money, I don't really like it because plants should be about enjoyment and companionship and about the care, not about what it's worth but i'm conflicted with this actually if you want to uh, want my honest opinion my favorite one would probably be this the, this variegated one that one i actually love for its beauty and rarity it's truly stunning imagine you have a big plant of this where it's white by the way this plant is also very unhealthy because it keeps giving me stressful leaves maybe because it's got so many variegated parts that it's not producing the right amount of chlorophyll but these guys in my opinion, beautiful variegation. It's not as stress inducing. It is expensive, but it is not that expensive. And this is also much faster growing, much healthier leaves. The variegation is stable, although the variegation is random. So if you buy one that is like this variegated, it is considered very variegated. The next few leaves may be a little more green, but then the variegation can come back. And if anything, you can just propagate it and you're gonna have a lot of chances of getting the variegation back. So this is very very stress-free in my opinion the prices will come down that one the price has, hasn't come down yet because it's such a slow grower and the variegation is very unstable but for these guys uh, the prices are already falling i, I noticed that so more people are going to be able to access this uh, nothing wrong with this one this is also beautiful i want to see these more in public spaces and things like that and in our landscaping and our in our bedrooms our indoor jungles but this one i actually uh, like this most in my collection it's the one that's brought me more most joy for its ease of care and how fast it grows and how beautiful the leaves are this is uh, known for its classic heart-shaped leaf they do uh, climb up or they do trail down and we see this a lot in stores in people's homes very easy to care for but they also come in a more famous variety here this is called the philodendron brazil where it's got this beautiful light green and yellow splash down the leaves and the variegation is very very random I'm sorry it fell over I guess I need to water these they're so light right now it's such a hot day out and this is very pretty they do put out pink new leaves that will 
harden into a green color and you need to give them light for them to push out the variegation. If you give them low light for extended period of time, this will turn into this, I guarantee you. And if I give this more light, it means some direct sunlight, not afternoon, hot, full sun, I just see something here. I don't know what this is. <laughs> Probably pest. Anyways, so give them good light. This is actually getting uh, not enough light. If I see this, this is not getting enough light. It should get more of the yellow. However, I do have one last one here, and this is sold to me as the Philodendron Gabby. And I, if you look at Instagram, everyone tagged this as the Philodendron Gabby. And I have sold a few of these, and I apologize, but this is not the Gabby. So the Philodendron Gabby is patented by Gabriella Plants, which is a really big plant nursery grower in the States. Not many people have the actual Gabby, which is almost completely all white. And I haven't really seen that in person. I haven't seen much of that in Instagram. So these ones are actually called the Cream Splash because they are, they do have the extra bit of line down here. So can you compare to the Brazil that we saw earlier? And if you give them more light, such as in this one, I, it's gonna give you more of that cream or that white, uh, what do you call it, a strip or line here. This is a really beautiful plant. And it's actually very, very expensive now, a cutting of this cost quite a bit of money and I actually fortunately I propagated so many of these so I now I have many pots of these and some of them I'm going to have them on sale so I have a feeling the price for these is going to go down very quickly because they grow really fast um, yeah but I apologize again and I want to make a statement here to the plant community to stop tagging this as the philodendron gabby we have to respect Gabriella plants in that their uh, their actual gabby is protected intellectually and it's not this plant so this is the cream splash i just want to put it out there and as a tally here somebody's back there sorry as a tally here i want to say that my favorite ones of these is going to be this one this is great i actually love this because you can keep this in low light and it will still grow indoors for this one actually it's great it's got this beautiful it, this used to be one of my favorite plants actually because of the random variegations and how beautiful each new leaf is but this one just brings it another notch because you've got that extra element of another stripe coming through so this is the winner for me and i do need to give this even more light than i do now because it's giving me quite a bit of green i like it to be very very variegated i like to sun stress my plants look at that that looks like a work of art so this is pretty and if you can't afford this yet because this is so expensive wait a little bit longer because the prices of these will come down i have a feeling that this will become the dominant strain kind of like covid i guess <laughs> where the mutated version is going to become the dominant strain so this one is going to become uh this will take over this and this someday and i'm so sorry but this is still a classic plant so i want to see this in in places where plant care needs to be very minimal this is going to be the winner in that situation this here is a beautiful classic Hoya, this is the Hoya Carnosa, and this is probably the most affordable one, the easiest to care for, this one that is known to be for beginners. If you grow these in lower light, and I don't mean low light, I mean like a medium light, it will give you some of these random splashes. And if you put them in high light, it will give you more green leaves, and some of the leaves may even turn lighter green in color from the sun stressing. But this is an easy and beautiful Hoya. And let me show you the variegated version. So this is one of them. And this is the Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen. And this is actually called the Queen. We have another variegated one, which we'll see later, called the Princess. It's called the Queen because the variegation is on the outside of the leaf. And the other one that we're gonna see later, the variegation is actually on the inside and the green is on the outside. And keep in mind that the more green that you have, the faster growing the plant will be. This is actually the most common one out of the three. So this is the one, this is a common green. This is the second one, another one is the princess, which we'll see later because it's mounted, so I can't show you here. But this one is the most common one that we see everywhere. It's just so beautiful. It puts out these very beautiful pink leaves that turn uh, green later on. Very, very van random variegations. And mealybugs love this plant. I haven't had this plant bloom for me yet, so I don't know what conditions they need to bloom but both of these are beautiful but I would have to say that my favorite is the, is the Hoya Crimson Princess and this here is the Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess and 
as you can see the variegation is actually in the middle this is the new leaf it is so pretty it's attached itself to this tree so i can't really move it around anymore although i did take cuttings of it from this sometimes look at the new growth this is so pretty look at that and let me see if i can find some more around here yeah this is my favorite one out of all of these uh, but this is also the slowest growing one because it's got such little green parts but if you put them in lower light as you can see back there it will give you more green leaves and when it's exposed to more sun it will give you like these very sun stress like green leaves with a lot of variegation so they will mutate depending on where you have them but the reason why i really love this plant is this look at that these are the ones that are really really d hidden deep inside this tree look at that that is such a beautiful leaf it's mutated into this so it's got tricolors on it and i don't know i haven't seen other people's plants that has this kind of tricolor pattern and this will have it as well and as you can see this is how hoyas grow in nature so they're epiphytes so they can grow up trees to find better light and yeah this is a beautiful specimen my favorite out of this uh, collection of hoya carnosa this right here is a alocasia mycorrhiza variegata i used to have the all green form but it died i have two more of these the over there and over here and i think they're not getting enough light down here honestly they like direct sunlight although that is also one way that you can kill them because the variegated parts will burn in direct sunlight so i'm a little bit torn with this i've seen big specimens of these so i need to figure out the care right i have a feeling they need to be fertilized quite a bit more because alocasias i have to find that they are heavy feeders but i may be wrong so putting that theory to the test but anyways i really adore this plant i like the variegated ones better than the all green forms although the green ones are going to be much prolific growers because they can take full sun they're gonna convert all that energy into leaf growth and can get absolutely massive but this can get big too but give me more time give me some time to get these to a good size but i really love this for the variegation so this one's a winner for me and need to take my time with this this one is actually a little bit bigger than that one i don't know why i didn't pull this out for the video but anyways we gotta move on this right here is a classic zz plant i actually have a better specimen but it's in my other corner and i'm too lazy to get there i'm so sorry but that plant is much bigger but this one i actually wanted to showcase this because i actually cut the whole thing off i cut all these stems off to propagate them this was actually bought as a sacrificial plant where i just wanted to propagate many of these and all of them are propagating away I just took stem cuttings i took leaf cuttings and i wanted to see which ones do better in water and in soil so that's my frankenstein zz plant but i'm really proud of this because even though i cut it all completely off it gave me four vines and this took about nine to ten months to get here so they are very very slow growing but anyways the point of this video is to show you this one next to it this is the variegated version and actually for this one i did take a few cuttings off it wasn't doing so well i did overwater it a bit and this is the new leaf it's still light green in color but it's gonna turn into a darker green like this one this is the older leaf but the variegation will fade a bit like this bright yellow will fade into this very dull yellow so this is actually really pretty and i've seen big pots of these where it's just like 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 very splash <laughs> leaves got on my hand so i enjoy seeing these i've seen these in nurseries in bigger pots this is actually a very pricey um, they sell this by the stem although that one there the zz raven is also very nice but we're not going to talk about that today we have another video dedicated for that another time so this is actually a pretty look at the variegation is super random very pretty and apparently if you uh, propagated by the leaf cutting you pluck this off and you propagate it it's still going to give you a variegated plant uh, from that one leaf because i've seen people do it even though I'm, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't do that but it did so what do i know right so with the zz plant i actually prefer the all green one unfortunately because first of all they're all very slow growers this is even slower growing than the green but i really love how classic it is and whenever i go to a restaurant or a mall and i see huge pots of these because there are people who grow them successfully in big pots and they get really full i've seen them in resorts in bali i just want to go over and say hi to them and pet them 
they just have such a beautiful classic look to them and I don't know there's such a statement plan in the way that they're resilient you can keep them in very low light provided that you don't overwater them they are they are the ultimate survivors basically if something happened in nature if it does a nuclear fallout or anything and all the house plants have died off I have a I'm betting my money that this is the one that's going to survive <laughs> and live on this is virtually indestructible and it's such a strong testament to that and I really love the, the shape of the, the growth pattern here, the one stem, and I love watching the new leaves unfurl. It comes out like a caterpillar, like a larvae, and then it'll just open up and take over the space. I like this green form better. Because they're such slow growers, I also appreciate them more whenever they grow. It just reminds me to take things easy and that not to take anything for granted. So I hope that this pot will recover. I have a feeling it will. It's going to give me many, many shoots and it's going to become such a good story. Uh, lifelong companion, hopefully. Let's move on to Sansevierias or Dracaena. This is a classic one. I believe this is the Trifasciata. And this was actually propagated by these variegated leaves, which we'll see soon. But then the new leaflets that come out from these is non-variegated because of their nature, they are chimeral. I don't know how to go into details and to explain what chimeral variegation is, but basically they will revert to this beautiful green color if you don't propagate them by rhizomes because Sansevierias, they live in the rhizomes. So if you want to have the variegation like this uh, in your propagation, you have to take the whole stem. You have to take the, the bottom part. This one's putting on a new baby. I just saw this. How cute. <laughs> so this is the variegated version of the plant. And also the mama plant for this and I really love that line, that yellow line over here. And with this one, they actually will still grow a little bit slower than the green one. But it, I love how beautiful, like that looks like a brush stroke, right? Like a very random brush stroke. And each leaf not only have different shapes, but they have different strokes, different widths of variegation. So I guess it's clear from the way I sound that this one is my preferred plant in out of these two. This is beautiful too actually when you don't have the variegation your eyes are really brought directly into how beautiful the markings on the leaves are. Look at that. That's really pretty. It's beautiful in its own right but for me I do enjoy this variegation and I believe that if you put these in low light the new leaves will give you more green and less variegation so these guys I should like to be in direct sunlight or full sun. All right, let's talk about the Ficus Elastica. And I'm sorry I don't have a small version of this plant. It's so big. And I'm gonna film from underneath, hang on. Yep, so that's what this plant looks like from underneath. Actually, there is a secondary branch from the same tree over there. It's beautiful, a very classic house plant. It was famous on Instagram for a while and now nobody wants them. They're actually quite difficult to care for. But we're gonna look at the variegated one of these. All right, so this is the variegated fiddly fig. Ficus lorata, it's so pretty, but it is very difficult to care for. I did lose some leaves in the bottom from, I don't know, maybe I underwatered it because I put it in a terracotta pot and fast draining potting mix and it gets some direct sunlight. So it needs to be watered almost daily. So I did lose some crisping edges as you can see here. The variegated parts are very, very fragile on these guys. They actually like full sun in nature. I mean the green form. But when you have a variegated one like this, they cannot take too much direct sunlight. You need to find a balance. If you put these in low light, they're going to start pushing out green foliage. So I'm going to be propagating these. I'm not worried that these leaves in the bottom are damaged. I'm going to do sections of cuts so I can make many plants out of this. So I guess it is safe to say that the, my favorite one out of these is this one, the variegated one. Look at that. This is so beautiful. Even though it's a little bit difficult and I'm still getting the care, right i'm still learning about it but i'm getting the hang of it so yeah this is definitely a winner for me next we have the ficus elastica this is the burgundy or the black form uh, the regular ficus elastica is actually a little bit lighter green than this but it is still pretty this is a classic house plant that's easy to care for really love watching this this is such a joy to watch i never get tired of this <laughs> but anyway we want to look at some of the variegated ones. And this one is the Ficus Taneki. I'm going to take this out and see. And I got this as a baby plant. Look how pretty. Nice. Each leaf is different. It's got a pink veining from 
in the middle. Actually, this one has pink or red lines too. Let me put them side by side. I actually like both of them. I can't make up my mind. I really like how easy to care for and classic this is. Although this one, I have a feeling will be a little bit more troublesome, especially when it gets bigger because this can take some direct sunlight and they love it. They love full sun, in fact, if you acclimatize them. They can also take low light. However, this one, it cannot take direct sunlight. I have a feeling the edges will burn. And if you give it low light, it's not going to be happy either because it doesn't have a lot of chlorophyll. So this is going to be a difficult plant. Look at how beautiful that is. This is going to be a very difficult plant as it matures because this is right now still a baby, so it's a little bit more manageable. So I'm going to say Thai. Can I, can I put a tie on these? I can't make up my mind, but yeah, let me know what you like better. I'm going to move on to the next plant. This here is the Maranta Kirchhoviana, which I have a video of. You can see how I care for this plant. And it's got mealybugs, look at that. <laughs> look at all these ants. So the white stuff is mealybugs. The ants are feeding off the poop material, the mealybugs. So the ants put them there. I do need to treat this very soon <laughs> because I neglected this. This was living under some other plants. Anyways, I digress. I really love how beautiful the leaves are over here. And then they come variegated. Look at this one right here. The variegation is yellow, it's splashy, and they actually don't cost that much difference. Usually variegated plants would cost a lot more than the non-variegated counterparts, but in this case, the, non -varie uh, the variegated version, at least here in Indonesia, is very, 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 very cheap and very affordable. Uh, I guess what I, it's time for me to vote now. I am going to vote for the non-variegated because I believe that the leaves are just so pretty on their own right. And actually when you water them, droplets form on the top of the leaves because they do repel water. So the droplets are just sitting there and they, or they will roll off very gracefully. So I like that about, let me see a little bit here. Maybe not, this is not the best example, but yeah, you know what I mean? If you miss them or if after the rain, it's just pretty sight to see. Uh, I do prefer this one because again, it's got such a beautiful marking, very classic. And this one just feels like it's very diseased. I don't know, it's just the variegation is an unnecessary part of the design. But let me know what you think. Oh, and I want to add that this is actually a low light loving plant. It actually thrives in low light, which is why I've been neglecting it because it's living under many, many plants. And as you can see, the leaves are bigger and better. If you give this bright indirect light, the leaves are going to curl up. They're going to push out smaller grow growths. So this is a plant that truly thrives in low light. However, if you put that variegated one in low light, it's going to lose variegation. So you know, when you are considering plants like this, do keep that in mind that, you know, light levels do play a factor in keeping the variegation. All right, let's talk about Hoya. This is a Hoya Carnosa Compacta Hindu Rope. It is such a big plant. This is the all green form. I have a video on these if you want to know how to care for it and propagate them. That video will cover that. And here actually is the variegated version. This is the Regale, I believe that's what it's called. Look at the beautiful variegation on the outside. The green form is actually very, very slow growing. It'll put out a new leaf every two to three months. Very, very slow. And this is even slower. My goodness. This is about, I don't know, this was a cutting actually. It was, it's about almost a year old. And this is all I got. I basically had maybe three to four leaves in the time frame very slow growing and also the tips do burn if you see here i do put it under direct sunlight sometimes which i shouldn't have but when you have variegated plants some of the variegation will burn first before the green parts but the new growths look healthy so i need to keep this away from direct sunlight and wait for it to grow and i like this one better the variegated better i hope that this will become a big plant and i can propagate it and have a bushy pot of these trailing down everywhere but i'm just fantasizing at this point because it'll take me maybe 10 years to get there but i'm patient so let's see but this is much prettier in my opinion than this one although hang on i did want to say that this plant blooms beautifully i don't know if the variegated ones are gonna let me see what is this thing hang on oh these are aerial roots i thought this is like this past no this is fine it's not scale but anyways they flower beautiful. I'm going to include the picture on the screen of what their flower looks like. And I have a feeling that the green form will flower a little bit more frequently than the variegated one. 
So here we have the Peperomia obtusifolia. I have a video on these if you want to see what they look like because I did take so many cuttings off this so you can't really see what the mature plant looks like. I'm so sorry about that but this is the green form and this is the variegated form and these are all being propagated as well. So the variegated ones will give you these beautiful splashy leaves. However, their variegation does disappear. As you can see, this is the old leaf. So the variegation is only temporary. It's only there on the newest growth pattern. Um, in this regard, I actually, I, I mean, I, I do appreciate the variegation, but I do like the all green version here better because it grows so much faster. It's easier to care for. And I have so many of these. I enjoy seeing, seeing them around. They are always putting out baby leaves like this. These are grown outdoors and I kind of abuse them, but the ones that are grown indoors have these beautiful glossy leathery leaves. I wish I could show you, but I can't. I'm so sorry. But for this one, I vote the green one. That's definitely the one that is closer to my heart. So the last plant that I'm going to talk about today, thank you for your patience, is this Hoya macrophylla. And I think if you follow my channel, you'll know that the variegated version of this is one of my favorite plants, my favorite Hoya. It's one, there's one up there, but I'm going to show you a different plant. But this is really pretty. It's got a beautiful leathery thick leaf, beautiful veins. And this one actually flowers quite a bit. As you can see, there's a lot of peduncles here and it will keep flowering from this peduncle and they can get huge. Look at how big this leaf is. Insane. So let me show you the variegated one. So here are the Hoya macrophylla variegata. Actually, I took about 30 cuttings off this plant. So this is why it looks a little bit sparse. But as you can see, the variegations are so beautiful. This is truly one of my favorite plants. And this one's mutated in that the variegation is in the middle. They do have a variety of this called the pot of gold where the variegation is in the middle. But for this plant, generally speaking, the variegation should be on the outside. And it does have, as you can see here, it does have a pink rim around it, even though there's a variegation around. So it's a green, variegated, and pink rim. They come out with these teeny tiny leaves that are bright hot pink in color and then the leaves expand in size to give you these. So this is really beautiful in its own right but because I give this direct sunlight, uh, I would say afternoon hot sun, I do have to water this a lot more because of that condition that I'm giving it. It grows really fast and it gives me these weird mutated leaves that with crazy variegation. I'm going to include some pictures on the screen of some of the other leaves that I've propagated from this that are really weirdly mutated but in a beautiful way. I hope that the propagations will yield mutated plants just like the cuttings but we'll see about that. So I guess that brings us to the end of this video. <laughs> Thank you so much so much for watching these videos. I hope that you've discovered some cool variegated plants here. Just keep in mind that sometimes the green versions are just as pretty or even better than the variegated ones. I hope that you guys are staying safe. I'm at Botanist on Instagram. If you want to DM me on any questions regarding plant care and propagations, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.